Hey, what's up guys? Chris Trini here for Chris Core Productions. Welcome to another basic tutorial. As you can tell today, we're going to be talking about 2D motion tracking inside of After Effects. Now this is part of uh, 10 other videos that you can find on my website or on my channel. And they pretty much break down 10 different steps of uh, mastering the basics in After Effects. So I strongly suggest you check the rest of these out. Make sure to subscribe to get notified when the rest of these are up. Uh, as of recording this video, uh, we're up to 2D motion tracking, so I still have yet to uh, make these tutorials. Let's jump into After Effects, and before we actually get to the motion tracking part, I actually want to show you uh, a couple of cool things that I did to uh, to this uh, to this shot to make it look a little bit more fancy. Yeah, fancy. The top over here, we see that we have an adjustment layer, and if we go to my effects, you can see that I just dropped in a camera lens blur, and I just made a mask and set it to subtract. So that kind of makes the edges very blurry and it's kind of dreamy looking uh, effect for, for this kind of shot. So that's what's going on over there. Then I have another adjustment layer with my uh, color grading. And you can see over here that I just uh, tweaked just with the curves, made it a nice uh, vintage looking uh, almost spring or summer, or I don't even know what season. I live in Florida, so seasons don't exist here. So I'm not sure what season this looks like, but it looks nice, in my opinion. So next up, we have uh, a black solid with a mask around it, and that's to kind of imitate the shadow that would be cast by the by the text over here. Then we have a null object and our text and our footage, and this is actually what we're going to be focusing on today, which is uh, the the motion tracking part of today's video. So I just wanted to run through the the main project for the video that you saw in the beginning, just so you guys can uh, you know can get a pretty good understanding of, of everything that I did. So with that out of the way, uh, go ahead and import your footage. I already have mine imported over here and we're gonna create a new composition. So I'm gonna drag it over this icon here and that creates a new composition, same resolution, same length and everything as our clip. So I'm not gonna use the entire clip. I'm actually gonna go, um, let's see, probably about yeah, I'm going to start around here. So what I'm going to do now is actually drag this in. Drag my work area start position in uh, roughly around where we are. And then I'm going to look at where I'm wanting to end. So, you know, let's not make this too long just for the sake of this tutorial. And then I'm going to grab the end of the work area and push that in. Now what I can do is I can right click in this uh, in this work area here and I can say trim comp to work area so now our entire composition is actually the length of that work area that we uh, that we selected okay so the first thing that you're gonna want to do is create a new null object and uh, what a null object is it's pretty much something that uh, can't be rendered it's just uh, pretty much a data holder so you'll see what I mean by that in uh, just a few seconds here so if we select the clip and if we go under animation, track motion. As soon as you click that, you see some, uh, some information pop up here in this tab. You see this track point appear in the center of the screen. And also you can notice that we're not in our composition view anymore, but we're actually in a layer view. So we're just looking at what's, uh, what's going on with this layer specifically without anything else that might be in your composition. So now that we have this point, what we want to do is, if I zoom in here, and I drag the sides of this tracking point, you can see that it kind of magnifies the, the area. So again, just click this and just drag it around. Okay, so as I'm looking for an area to track, I'm keeping a couple of things in mind. Number one, I don't want to use any of these flowers over here because, uh, you know, they're moving with the wind and that would mess up our track pretty bad. Also, I want to pick an area that's uh, pretty high contrast. Uh, that's not out of focus. So uh, let's see. There is this little guy right here. Not sure what it is, but you can see it's almost like a little bit of uh, like a darker color. And uh, this could this could work well for us. What I'm going to do right now is expand this uh, this box over here, this outer box, and this is pretty much the the search area. And you don't want this too big, but for something this small and uh, with the amount of camera shake that this shot has, you might want to you know, enlarge it just a bit, but don't go too crazy because then 
your uh, your tracking will uh, will suffer from it and it will be also a lot longer to track then this is your actual track area so I'm gonna enlarge this just a bit so it can have a little bit more information of different colors over here and as you can see it's not perfectly in focus but it should work pretty good for what we're trying to do so once you've found something that you want to track in your scene all you have to do is hit play over here and you can notice that After Effects is now uh, analyzing frame by frame uh, your, your scene. Okay, so we are done. And uh, if we kind of scroll through here, we can see that our uh, tracking point is, uh, you know, sticking to that ground. It's not perfect, but you get the idea. You know, if, uh, if your tracking point is going all over the place and it's not doing what you're expecting it to do, pick another point in, uh, or another spot in your, in your scene. So, you know, it's kind of trial and error. You got to keep trying until you find a good area that works well for uh, After Effects Tracker. So, I'm pretty happy with this. And uh, what we want to do is attach all this information into keyframes to this null object. And this is really simple to do. You can see that our motion target over here is our null that we want. But if it says something else, click Edit Target and, uh, you know, select the null that you want to, uh, to select. So it's always good to make sure that we are uh, assigning those keyframes to the right null in our composition. But, you know, let's go OK because that works perfectly fine. And uh, let's hit Apply and hit OK for this window. And now it brings us back into our composition view. Now if I select my null object and I hit P on my keyboard, you can see that there is a ton of keyframes for uh, my position. And that's because we've now created keyframes that animates this null object to follow the movement of, of our scene here. So far, so good. So now what we want to do is uh, create some text that can uh, stick to the ground nicely and uh, you know appear to be as if it was in the scene. So I'm going to right click here and add new text. And I'm going to type in, um, hey, what's up, bro? All right, so now that we uh, you know, wrote our beautiful poem over here. Uh, we want this to uh, match with the same movement as our null object and as our scene. So, you know, if I play this right now, it's not sticking to anything. And that's because we need to tell this text to follow this null's motion. So in order to do that, we have to parent this layer to our null object. So there's two ways to do this. One way is to go over by the swirly icon, click and drag it over to our, uh, our null object. Or we can, uh, you know, find our null object in this uh, in this drop-down view. So either way works. And now, if I ramp preview this, and I hit play, you can see that the text is now doing what we want it to do. Now, keep in mind that you know this is good because uh, we track something in the foreground and our element is in the foreground. But let's say you want something in the background, then you're gonna want to repeat this whole process, but with uh, tracking something in the background. Alright guys, I wanted to keep this uh, short and sweet. As you can see in this uh, tracker window, we have a couple other options, which is uh, track camera, warp stabilizer, uh, and stabilize motion. Stabilize motion is very similar to uh, track motion, but instead of using that, that data that you gather from a track point or two to track something in your scene, you're actually using that information to, uh, to stabilize your, your footage. So we're going to look into that in, um, in the near future, but I feel that there's a lot of information thrown at you for this video tutorial. So, you know, I want to get you uh, comfortable with this first, and then we're going to start looking at all these other options. Mainly next week, we're going to be focusing on tracking a camera and, uh, you know, 3D camera tracking. Tracking can be a little bit tricky, so it's all a matter of just practicing. And uh, if you don't get it right the first time, just pick another spot in your in your area. But other than that, go ahead and create some uh, some amazing stuff and always feel free to send them to me. Anyways, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please uh, hit like. It really does help. And if you share it with your friends and, uh, you know, get me some subscribers and views, that would be awesome. You know, help me help you guys. And uh, I really strongly recommend you guys watch the rest of these videos if you haven't. And definitely stay tuned for, uh, for the upcoming tutorials. And after all this stuff is done, we'll be able to move on to really exciting visual effects and uh, and much more. So definitely stay tuned. My name is Chris Juni for Chris Corp Productions, and I will see you next time.